This is a CBS News special report. I'm Jerika Duncan. We're coming on the air with significant new information on the urgent and around the clock search for that missing submersible vessel in the Atlantic. I want to go straight to the news conference right now so we can get the Good latest afternoon, information. Everyone. Thank you for joining us today and over the past few days. This afternoon, Rear Admiral John Mauger will be providing an update on the most recent findings from ROV operations in search of the Titan submersible. He will provide a brief statement and provide the opportunity for questions after. Please limit your questions to one per outlet. Following the briefing, the Joint Information Center staff and I will be here to help you with any of your further needs. May I now please introduce Rear Admiral John Mauger. This morning, an ROV or remote operated vehicle from the vessel Horizon Arctic discovered the tail cone of the Titan submersible approximately 1,600 feet from the bow of the Titanic on the seafloor. The ROV subsequently found additional debris. In consultation, with experts from within the Unified Command, the debris is consistent with the catastrophic loss of the pressure chamber. Upon this determination, we immediately notified the families. On behalf of the United States Coast Guard and the entire Unified Command, I offer my deepest condolences to the families. I can only imagine what this has been like for them. And I hope that this discovery provides some solace during this difficult time. Additionally, we've been in close contact with the British and French Consuls General to ensure that they are fully apprised and that their concerns are being addressed. The outpouring of support in this highly complex search operation has been robust and immensely appreciated. We are grateful for the rapid mobilization of experts on the undersea search and rescue, and we thank all of the agencies and personnel for their role in the response. We're also incredibly grateful for the full spectrum of international assistance that's been provided. The ROVs will remain on scene and continue to gather information. Again, our most heartfelt condolences go out to the loved ones of the crew. We'll now take questions. This was a uh, incredibly uh, complex uh, case. Uh, and we're still working to develop the details uh, for the timeline involved uh, with uh, this casualty and uh, the response. And so we'll provide that information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is an incredibly complex uh, operating environment on the seafloor over two miles uh, beneath the surface. And so uh, the, the remote operating vehicle has been searching and it is highly capable. Uh, and we've been able to classify uh, parts of the uh, pressure chamber uh, for uh, the Titan submersible. Let me refer to uh, one of my uh, undersea experts here, uh, Mr. Uh, Paul Hankin, to talk about uh, the nature of some of the debris. Uh, thank you, Admiral. So, so essentially we found uh, five different major pieces of, of debris that uh, told us that it was the uh, remains of the Titan. The initial thing we found was the nose cone, which was outside of the pressure hull. 
Um, we then found a large debris field. Within that large debris field, uh, we found the, the front end bell of the pressure hull. Um, that was the first indication that um, there was a catastrophic event. Um, shortly thereafter, we found the a second smaller debris field. Within that debris field, uh, we found the the other end of the pressure hull, the, the aft end bell, um, which was basically the comprise of the totality of that pressure vessel. Um, we continue to map the debris field, and as the Admiral said, we will uh, do the best we can to fully map out what's down there. Thanks, Paul. Yes, sir. Go ahead. It's, it's, a, it's a very difficult question to ask, but it will be an important one for the families, of course. But what are the prospects of recovering the bodies of the missing so, so the question was uh, related, I'm restating the question from the standpoint of uh, sometimes it's hard to hear the question here. Uh, what are the prospects for re, uh, recovering uh, crew members? And so uh, this is a incredibly unforgiving uh, environment down there uh, on the seafloor. Uh, and uh, the debris is consistent with a catastrophic uh, implosion of uh, the vessel. And so uh, we'll continue to uh, work and continue to uh, search uh, the area uh, down there, but uh, I, I don't have an answer for uh, prospects at this time. Admiral, it's time to NBC News. Is there any suggestion? Sorry, any suggestion at all that the that the sub itself collided with the wreckage of Titanic or that instead, instead it might have imploded above the wreckage and then rained down nearby? So uh, the question was, is there any question as to whether or not the sub collided with the Titanic or whether it uh, imploded uh, above and, and debris uh, field created from that? Uh, so the uh, the the location of the Titan submersible was in an area that was approximately 1,600 feet uh, from uh, the uh, wreck of the Titanic. Uh, I have uh, an expert here that can that is familiar with that area and can talk about uh, the debris field and and what uh, the debris field indicates in terms of uh, the where the casualty may have occurred. Rear Admiral, really quickly, can you tell me when that massive fleet will be called back? Uh, uh, thank you, Admiral. Uh, so the question is, where does the wreck lie in uh, relation to the Titanic? Uh, I didn't hear the Admiral's uh, answer. I think 1,600 feet. Was that correct, Admiral? Yep. You got it. Uh, so that's, uh, that's off the bow of Titanic. It's in an area where there is not any debris of Titanic. It is a smooth bottom. Uh, there, to my knowledge and anything I've seen, there's no Titanic wreckage in that area. And again, 200 plus meters from the bow uh, and consistent with the location of last communication uh, for an implosion in the water column. And the size of the debris field is uh, consistent with that implosion in the water column. Thanks. Well, what would cause the implosion? In terms of the timing here, uh, you say that this was a catastrophic implosion. I know it's early on, but is it your estimation that this happened right at the moment when they lost contact an hour and 45 minutes after the descent? Uh, so the question was about the timing of the catastrophic implosion. Uh, right now, it is uh, too early to tell uh, with that. Uh, we know that uh, as we've been prosecuting uh, this search uh, over the course of the last uh, 72 hours uh, and, and beyond, uh, that we've had sonar buoys in the water uh, nearly continuously and have not uh, detected any uh, catastrophic events uh, when those sonar buoys have been in the water, so. Can you describe what happens from here, sir, uh, in the next days and weeks in terms of finding uh, any more debris? What happens from here? So we will, uh, the question was, uh, what happens from here? Uh, what What's the next phase? Um, and so right now, uh, again, our uh, thoughts are uh, with the families uh, and making sure that uh, um, they have uh, um, an understanding as best as we can provide uh, of, of uh, what happened and, and uh, begin to uh, find uh, some closure. 
Uh, in terms of the large process, we're going to continue to uh, investigate the uh, site of uh, the debris field. Uh, and then I know that there's also a lot of questions about uh, how, why, and when uh, did this happen. Um, and so, uh, you know, those are questions that uh, we will uh, collect as much information as we can on uh, now uh, while uh, the governments are, are meeting and, and discussing, uh, you know, uh, what uh, uh, an investigation of this uh, nature of uh, a casualty might look like. This is something that happened, I'll just, just remind everybody, this is something that happened in a remote portion of the, of the ocean. Uh, with uh, uh, people uh, from, you know, uh, several different countries around the world. Uh, and so it is a uh, complex uh, case to work through, but I, I, I'm confident that uh, uh, those questions will uh, begin to get answered. So the 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 is there any suggestion that time factors speed anything to prevent this and save uh, the uh, the question was uh, was there any suggestion that uh, time factors uh, w may have uh, played a a, um, a a role or or a consideration in uh, the the casualty here, and so the debris field is consistent with a catastrophic uh, uh, implosion of the vessel. Uh, again, while uh, we were prosecuting the search, we had uh, listening devices uh, in the water throughout and did not hear uh, any uh, signs of catastrophic uh, failure uh, from those. And so we're going to continue to uh, investigate uh, or we're going to continue to uh, document the information there and, and understand uh, based on all the information we have, the, the timeline. And you were listening to a news conference there with Rear Admiral John Mogger with the U.S. Coast Guard confirming that those five people on that submersible have perished, saying that it was, quote, a catastrophic implosion. Also mentioning that the why, how, when did all of this happen is still unclear, but wanted to make sure the family of those five people you see on your screen right there were notified before they held this news conference. I want to go to Roxana Saberi, who is in Boston, has been there for several days covering this. A lot of people hoping for a miracle, but obviously, as the hours went on, knowing about the supply of oxygen that they had and the fact that this was not a submersible that had been approved or certified by any regulatory body, many people had feared the worst. Roxana? Yeah, Jerika, as you mentioned, we just heard from the Coast Guard here in Boston. The Coast Guard has been overseeing and leading the, the search efforts. And Rear Admiral Mauger did say that a remote operated vehicle that was deployed by the Canadian, Canadian commercial vessel Horizon Arctic had found some debris about 1,600 feet from the bow of the Titan, Titanic on the sea floor and confirmed, he confirmed that this was consistent with uh, the loss of the pressure chamber. He said it, it shows the catastrophic implosion of the Titan submersible that has been missing since Sunday morning. You know, as you said, people have been holding on to hope that perhaps the passengers, the five passengers are bored, were still alive. We uh, had heard reports of banging noises that were given out every, that were emitted every 30 minutes on Tuesday and Wednesday, but we had not heard any updates on that since Wednesday. So people were hoping that perhaps the passengers had survived, but now we are hearing that there were five pieces of debris that were found and they were all belonging, they said, uh, to the Titan submersible. So uh, they are still investigating, trying to determine the timeline and what exactly happened. But again, they said everything points to a catastrophic implosion of the vessel. Jerika. That's right. And those um remote operated vehicles will remain uh, on scene. I want to turn now to CBS News Sunday morning correspondent David Pogue. He joins us now. David, you went on board the Titan last year for a story about the sub and interviewed the CEO of OceanGate. Uh, can you tell us your reaction to all of this? I mean, you were on this. I know you didn't get that far into it, um, but what an experience and, and a tragic ending. It's, it's a complicated brew of emotions. I haven't completely process the fact that Stockton Rush, the CEO, the designer of the sub, the pilot of the sub, 
is gone. I spent nine intense days with him last year on the Horizon Arctic, the very ship that has just discovered the wreckage. And P.H. Narjolet, one of the most dived Titanic experts in the world, uh, these were amazing guys. These were adventurers. You know, these are not uh, like me, possibly you. They thrive on risk and danger and exploration. Uh, and it's, it's hard to think that they're just gone like that. Yeah, we'll have much more, of course, later on. David Pogue, we thank you so much for your analysis.